Have you turned your Bibles to 2 Kings tonight? 2 Kings chapter 6. Again, reading at verse number one. And the sons of the prophets said unto Elijah, said unto Elisha, Behold now, behold now, the place where we dwell, the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. With thee is too straight for us. For us. I'm going to read down a few more verses. But before we do, just a little background. Elisha, Old Testament Israelite prophet, the northern kingdom. About 150 years after the reign of King David. King David's son Solomon. Transition, his sons was to take over. Jeroboam, you know about the split of the kingdom, didn't follow the wise counsel. He was a disciple and a student of Elijah. So Elisha was a disciple and a student of Elijah. Elijah was called to confront the nation who had become steeped in idolatrous worship. After being humbled by a severe drought and famine, Israel was now on the path of returning to worshiping the true God. You know about Mount Carmel, where Elijah called all the false prophets up there and said, we got to make a decision. Y'all call on y'all God. I'm going to call on the one true God. This nation must get back to God. Well, being directed by God to locate his successor, God directed him to anoint Elijah. So Elijah found him in the field, plowing his father's field. And he said, come follow me. God has an assignment for you. And he had to drop the plow. And you know what the scripture says that any man that forsake the plow and look back is not fit. If you're going to do a work for God, some things going to have to drop. Consecration always precedes power. If you're going to do a work for God, there's no way you're going to be able to maintain everything. Something's going to have to go. So here he had to step up and consecrate, drop the plow, but also had to leave his family. Sometimes when you're laboring for God and you're doing the will of God, it will require you to do some things that may not be very comfortable. When you're thinking of going deeper in God and God is endeavoring for you to go deeper, there may be some friends, amen, that you got to let go of. There may be some comrades that you may have let go of. There may be some comfortable things in life that you may not be able to endure. Amen. Because God is calling you to a higher assignment. Well, here he followed Elijah very closely. And the mantle fell upon him. He got the anointing. And he said, you got to follow close to me. Don't be distracted. Many things try to distract Elijah from following Elijah, but he stayed right with him. Even Elijah said, you know what? Go back. Do what you. He said, I ain't going nowhere. I'm staying right here with you. 
You're not going to get me distracted. I'm staying here. Jobs may offer, but I'm staying on my assignment. I'm going to keep following after God. I'm staying close to God. I'm not going to let nothing get between. It may cost me a few dollars, amen, an hour. It may cost me a couple of uh, uh, vacation days, this, that, and the other, but I'm staying close to God. I'm not going to allow anything to get between me, amen, and my consecration, me, and being close, amen, here. So he said, I'm going to stick close with him. He couldn't shake him. Amen. No matter how hard he tried, he couldn't shake Elijah. Amen. Elijah said, I'm standing here. I'm getting this mantle. Amen. I'm not going to allow. Amen. No situation to cause me not to receive the calling, the blessing that God has on me. Thank God. And one day God called. Amen. Elijah. Amen. He called him up in a whirlwind, in a chariot. Amen. Thank God he did not see death. One day he was walking. Amen. Down the street, no doubt. And God called him. Amen. Up to heaven. And thank God he was right there to see the whole thing. Elijah saw it. He saw, amen, him going up the cloud spinning. He said, oh, behold, the chariot of Israel. Amen. God called him up and he saw it. And because he did not allow, amen, the cares of life. He did not allow distractions or people. He didn't allow anything to break his consecration his focus no doubt month after month amen his faith was being tried no doubt he got tired no doubt he got weary no doubt friends were calling him here and friends calling him there no doubt opportunities in the world came and said come this way come that way he said no no I'm not allowing it to shake my consecration I'm not going to allow it to cause me amen not to be close to the man of God I'm staying right here I will not allow anything to hinder me thank God and when he took when God took him up, thank God, it said a double portion, amen, fell upon Elijah because he was in position. God gave him a double portion to continue the assignment that Elijah had. Thank God he gave him a double portion, an anointing, may God, a double power to carry out the assignment. When you don't allow, amen, distractions to come, the devil wants, amen, the cares of life, this opportunity, that opportunity. Anytime you see a person that really receives a mantle or really receives a power, with God, you will see them consecrating and they will have a focus. They will not allow carnal young people to distract them, get them involved in this and involved in that. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not doing it. They won't allow my God the cares of life. I ain't going to church. Well, that's on you. I'm going to church. I'm seeking God. Amen. They will not allow, amen, opportunities that can come. Hey, you can make a little more money. Hey, this school is calling you uh, to go away from the saints and be a part of this. You have to have the mindset. I will not allow anything to to distract me if I'm praying things through I'm staying on my knees if I'm praying for my children I'm not going to allow anything to distract me and the double portion fell on him Amen. now here we are this brother was so successful in his ministry he was so amen anointed of God he was so powerful and impactful that, my God, groups of young men everywhere he went on the circuit, groups of young men would follow after and sit there to learn at his feet. Here they were when they said, behold, man of God, prophet, amen, the place is too straight for us. And if you were to translate that more purely, it would say the place, amen, is too uh, uh, small for us. There's too many people that want a part of this. See, people want truth, saints. People want to those that are honest. They want truth, my God. Amen. And if, and if the gospel goes forth and they can hear a real word of God that delivers souls from sin, real power. Amen. And they're honest. Amen. They want truth. Those that are on those that are dishonest. They want a worldly way. They want a watered down gospel. They want a gospel that will let them do what they want to do and have their cake and eat it, too. But those that are honest. Amen. As long as it's in a book, they want all of it. Don't water it down. Amen. Don't bring the gospel down. Bring my life up. My God, get me off the drugs. Get me off having sex before marriage. Get me off of going to the club. Deliver me from this pornography spirit. Deliver me from lying. Deliver me from smoking. Deliver me. The body is a temple of God. I feel condemned when I'm doing this stuff. I don't want to go to a church that's my God just allowing me to do whatever and my God feel good about it. I shouldn't feel good. Well, I don't like to go there because when I go down there, I feel condemned. Well, amen. If you're doing something wrong and you come to a real church, you should feel condemned. Why? It's not to hurt 
wants you is to help you. God wants you to get on track. And anytime God, amen, brings con a condemnation, he'll also bring grace to help you get it right. He's not just condemning you for condemning sake, but he wants you to get it right so you'll be fit for heaven and you'll be a light to the world. How can you be a light to this dark world when you're doing what they do? How in the world you call yourself a Christian, Christ-like, when you're doing what they do? God needs us to be a light to this world. Amen, brother. Amen. Amen. So here, Elijah was so anointed and so powerful that it began to grow. And he said, the place is too small. We need a bigger place. That's the background of what took place here. Now let's go into this story. And the sons of the prophet said unto Elijah, Yes. Behold now, uh -huh. the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Uh-huh. Let us go, we pray thee. They told Brother Hampton, my God, you coming in with that gospel about women dressing like women, being modest, trusting God, not having Hollywood, amen, all up in your home, all this other stuff. They say, you keep preaching that in Jackson, amen, you ain't going to get nobody. You're going to dry up, amen, the little people you got, they're going to leave, and they're going to chase you back to Detroit. He said, you know what, amen, they didn't give me this mandate, God did. And I'm going to preach what God say preach. Amen. As long as it's in the Bible, I'm going to preach it. I'm not going to water it down to bring a new gospel. Amen. The same gospel that worked, amen, before will work now. Thank God he preached everlasting gospel. And you know what God did? Amen. The more he preached, the more he stood, the more people came. Oh, amen. Lord. You say, brother, no, some left. You're right. Some did leave, but God replaced them. My oh, Lord, amen. Amen. Oh, amen. Lord. Sometimes you think of it as a defect. And God is saying, I'm just pruning Amen. You know, when you prune a brush, it grows bigger. <laughs> Amen. Ain't nobody got no monopoly on God. Amen. Don't let nobody think you. They, they go, well, I'm going to leave. I'm taking the glory with me. No, you're not. You're going to take dead air with you and God going to replace it with some fresh air. Amen. We're going to come to church and say, why is all this, where all this fresh air coming from? Oh, it's so fresh around here. It's so encouraging. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. You call it that addition by subtraction. All right, let's go ahead. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan. All right, let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan. And take this every man a beam. And take this every man a beam. And let us make us a place there. And let us make us a place there. Where we may dwell. Where we may dwell. And he answered, go ye. And he answered, go ye. And so we, here you at the son of the prophets, pupils of Elijah. He was very popular and an affectionate prophet. The place was too small for their assembly where they would come and sit and he would teach them the things of God. They said, let us go, we pray thee, into the Jordan. The region they were at didn't have trees, but right by the Jordan, it was well populated. He said, and let us build a place where we may dwell so that we can all learn from thee. Much growth was taking place. You see a couple things in this text. One was that they were willing to work. It's always a good sign. They didn't say, you go do it. They didn't say making excuses, but they were willing to work. You will find those that are mightily used of God have a strong work ethic. They're not looking for things to be handed down. They may ask for some direction and guidance. One brother called me the other day and said, Billy, a new convert just bought $65 worth of books doctrinal books, deep study books. See, it's one thing to come and sit here and be fed, but you really want to grow, you're going to dig yourself. Let me say that again. It's one thing to come and be fed, and that's important, but if you really want to grow, you're going to dig yourself. You're going to get in the book. Here they said, let us go and build and tear down these uh, trees and this, that, and the other. I'd be so inspired when I hear saints say, yeah, me and so-and-so so -so -so were studying last night, and we're studying before the call, and we're going over the ta uh, tabernacle, we're going over the, the, uh, 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 the heart chart, we're going to dig in. Those that are mightily used, you're going to see they got a work ethic, spiritual work ethic. One brother was saying, uh, some of his family don't go to church here. He said, after every service, I go back home, and I go over what the message was to my whole family. You know what you really, really learn? You learn a portion of what you see, 
a greater portion of what you hear and see, but you learn the most of what you go and teach to somebody else. If you really want to learn something, if you really want to learn something, get enough of it that you can go and share with somebody else. Get enough understanding of it yourself. Not what well, brother so-and-so said, no, 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 no. Go over here. Go over here. Go over here. And God is no respected person. You can know the doctrine, the truth. You can understand the deep things of God, but it's going to take effort. It's going to take effort. So you see two things here that was earmarks that they were going to be mightily used. One, they had a good work ethic. They were willing to go. They said, let us go. Number two, they asked. They didn't even just assume. You know what? There's an, anytime you ever see somebody mildly used, they seek counsel and they follow it. If I could give anything on earth that would tell you one of the most important elements of being used of God, seeking godly counsel and follow it. Anybody that does not follow counsel, watch, just sit back, go get some popcorn and sit back. They got all the answers, they know everything, they make decisions, this, and the other. And they, when they do seek counsel, it's only to have counsel confirm what they already decided. You better than I am, you better than they are, you better than Elijah was, you better than Timothy was, you better than, you better, you, 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 you're great. You're making your own. The Bible said there's safety. Safety, there's something there, there's something there, there's something. What's your thoughts on this? Now follow See counsel all the time, but today, what's your thoughts on this? Will you please? Some saints around here been around here, been around here before I was born. What's your thoughts on this? How do you feel about this? See counsel. You ought to make it a practice. We're in a generation now where young people don't listen. I'm preaching. I'm preaching. I'm preaching. Put we gonna put you out of church. Put me out of the church. Where? What church are you gonna put me out of? You ain't got no church. It's God's church. You got to listen. You want to be successful? Listen. Tell him one of the young brothers the other night about financial literacy. I said, listen, where are you going tonight? He said, well, I'm about to go. I said, go home and eat. You know how much money young people waste eating out? I said, wow. Okay, don't come to me talking about, well, I want to be married. Ain't got, you, you better be, Listen. Listen. So here, they did two things that were so powerful. I'm preaching before I even get to the message. I got, a, I got a word tonight. It ain't long, but it's a word. But I'm giving some word before I get to the word. They had a work ethic. They weren't lazy. Saints of God, do you know how hard it is for people today to pray through? You want to be sincere? You can't be lazy. You got to put some, my mother used to say, you tired? Go get some water and put it on your face. You tired to you eat you to pray? Get up, go in there and put some water on your face so you can pray through tonight. I got I got a burden on you. But you gotta, you gotta, you can't be lazy. You, you realize anytime that there is a spiritual assignment, watch the enemy, the demon of sleep, of tiredness, <laughs> and maybe the natural effects of it. <laughs> but it just seems like it's just it, it's enhanced when you want to do something spiritual. You've been ripping and running all day long. Soon you come to church. <gasps> Don't be yawning on me. You've been ripping and running all day long, all, just doing whatever. And this is what gets me right here. This, this is when the, Holy, the ministry got to have Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost power, Holy Ghost and power. Proclaiming the gospel, sitting there every few, <laughs> soon as the service over, hey, how you doing? Oh, goodness, oh, how you doing? Are you, you done, you done came to life. You done got the anointing. You, you, you inspired. I use, now you can go home and get some sleep. Oh, I'm good. I'm awake now. <laughs> you know what? If you want to be used to God, you got to li literally have a work ethic, though. And you also got to be willing to listen. Keep going. So he went with them. And One of the dangers of an individual desiring to be used, I really do believe this. The enemy comes in to try to make them think they got all the answers. Oh, wow. That I don't need no, I, 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 I don't need to listen to nobody. I'm always afraid of any young person being used that don't want to listen. Right. They got all the answers. Wow. You got all the answers. It's kind of like a, like a teenage child. You know, they get to a certain point and they got all the answers. You, you, you didn't figure out, you, you got all the answers. And your mom and dad, they twice as old as you are. They done been through way more than you've been through. And you got all the answers. You listen and less and less and less. Watch what happens. But these young men here, they listened. 
They sought counsel and asked him, can we go? Come on, read. And one said, uh -huh. be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servant. And he answered, I will go. This represents a couple other points. One was the affection that they had for him. And that was powerful. Deep effect. Won't you go with us to do it? And number two, and listen to what he said. And he answered, I will go. Man, I'm going to preach. I'm the prophet. I'm not going to help with, uh, cut that tree down. I'm better than that. I'm to, anybody, you see, Miley, please. No. You ain't all that. No. Here he was. This is Elisha the, the, raising a dead man. He said, I'll go. I, 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 yeah, please. And then, yeah. It, 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 I'm not looking for the big assignments. I'm willing to do the grunt work. I'm willing to get I'm willing to roll my sleeves up. Be careful anybody that weren't, wasn't first willing to roll their sleeves up and get dirty and, and do the stuff behind the scenes. Usually when somebody wants to be used, they want to do something in front. They want to do something in front of everybody. Everybody, look, oh, uh, no, I want to, I got to, uh, 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 I got to burden what for prayer me? No, for, uh, uh, for the combined choir on Friday, on Saturday. I got a message for, no, uh, not, 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 uh, uh, for the main sir. Do the grunt work. Just do the grunt. And don't even want to do nothing else. Just the grunt. I don't want to do nothing. You laying a foundation that's going to be so solid. You're not looking for the line. You're not looking for the appeasing man and the applause of man. No, no. I just want the work to be done. And let, and let somebody else get the glory. I'm not looking for that. I'm building my foundation. I don't want it to be shoddy. I don't want it to be built on self-glory. I want it to be built on humility. I don't want, matter of fact, that stuff can mess people up. And then I'll need that. that, that that'll be what feeds me instead of the work of God being done. So here Elijah was willing to go with them. Verse number four. So he went with them. So he went with them. When they came to Jordan, uh -huh. they cut down wood. Uh -huh. But one was failing. They didn't play beam. around with the assignment. They went directly to carry out the assignment. The Lord's work requires haste. They went quickly and said, let's go get it done. Let's go get it done. Many times the enemy will have us delay doing what God is calling us to do. The, world, the Lord's work requires haste. Haste, the king's work. Come on, Ari. But as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water. Come on. And he cried and said, Alas, my master, for it was borrowed. So here one was cutting down a tree, and the axe head whoosh, flung. They, were, they weren't in the water, but they were near the water. And the axe head flung over in the water and whoosh, quickly to the bottom. Read. And the man of God said, uh -huh. where fell it? Uh -huh. And he showed him the place. Yes. And he cut down a stick and cast it into, and cast it in thither. Uh -huh. And the iron did swim. Mm -hmm. Therefore so, said he, take it up to thee and put out his hand and took it. Uh -huh. Then the king of Syria warred Stop against right Israel. Stop right there. Stop right there. It says the man of God said, where did it go? Now mind you, he wasn't being frivolous and he didn't just misplace it but he was utilizing it and something beyond his control took place he said where did it fall where it fell it and he showed him the place he was responsible he knew exactly where it was and he cut down a stick and cast it in thither cut down a tree branch cast it in the water, and the iron did swim. Our title tonight, and the iron did swim. And the iron, probably one of the strongest messages of inspiration in scripture, and the iron did swim. Iron Axe head went into the water. They cried out and said, Master, alas, alas, Master, it was borrowed. Here, he took a stick, took it off, threw it into the water. The iron head. Picked it up. And said, here you go. And the scripture says, now, some folk can't swim. 
and iron never swims. The element iron ore made by the particles that's burned and come together with limestone, so on and so forth, is heavier than H2O. So from a physics perspective, it's an impossibility. My, my, my. Oh, Lord, help us. But we're talking about God here. Amen. You got to get the spirit. Why was this put in scripture? Of all the things that were put in the Bible, why did he put, and the iron did swim? Why was this put there? It seems so insignificant. It didn't save a nation. It didn't do this, that, and the other. Oh, but saints of God, the God that we serve and the level that he cares. Pray for us tonight and may your faith be inspired. And the iron did swim. Now, there are some things that we must consider and there are three points we want to cover in this message. Why was this put in scripture? What was the essence behind it? And there's three key takeaways from this sermon, from this text that God inspired holy men of old to put into his word. One, we're going to go through each one. It depicts how deeply God cares about what concerns his children. How deeply God cares about what concerns his children. Number two. Possessing the faith to take the impossible to God. Pray for us tonight, saints. We're going to get each one of these. Possessing the faith. This text indicates possessing the faith to take the impossible to God. They didn't blink. As soon as it happened, he came straightly and said, my master, master. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Number three. It depicts the power of God to intervene despite the difficulties present. The power of God to intervene. When you have a situation, the power of God to intervene despite the difficulties present. Amen. All right. Let us look. Now, mind you, the things that we're going to preach tonight will encourage and inspire your faith when you're dealing with an impossible situation. The enemy wants you to look at the impossibility of it, but tonight we want to inspire you. Sometimes the devil will come and say, God doesn't care about that. Or who are you? You too little. Or that situation is too little to take to God. Or he's too busy to be concerned about something like that. Listen, if, it's, if, it, if, it, if it matters to you, it matters to God. Read verse number five. Come on and read. Number one, how deeply God cares about what concerns his children. Read. But as one was filling a beam, uh -huh. the axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, Alas, Master. He cried, cried, cried. He was facing something. It was a difficulty. Why is this put in scripture? Now, mind you, there is no person too small to get to God. In other words, God is not so big time. Some people in this world, you can't get to unless you're somebody. But there's no person that is too small to get to God. Also, there's nothing too small to take to God. If it matters to you, it matters to God. Now, you have to understand how deeply God cares about each of his children from a singular perspective. Now, many of the miracles in scripture are involving major changes in, multitude, in a multitude of lives. You may say, brother, give me an example. Okay, the feeding of the 5,000. He did a miracle. Changed the bread, two small fish, fed all of them. Um, you may say uh, the opening of the Red Sea. That saved a nation. You may say David killing Goliath. That was a nation trying to take a nation. And God intervened in that situation, took the stone, hit him in the head. But 
most of the miracles that you see are because it affected a multitude of people. But God slipped this one little verse in the scripture and it said the iron did swim. Here he's saying that it was no nation. It was not 5,000 people. It was one little person who had one little issue. And God, let me say it like this. The, 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 uh, the, the Gentile world, paganistic worshiping God. They worship gods that are so far out there, that, that, that are so extreme, that they're very impersonal. That, that, that they, 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 they're in another realm. But the one true God is a God that is concerned about the things that matter to us. Now, you have to, and I pray that this will inspire your faith. Pray about smaller stuff now. That if it bothers you, pray about it. Don't just pray about the big stuff. This seemed like just a small thing, and it was in some context. But if it is even small, but it's bothering you, don't just bear that. Pray about it. Pray about everything. The Bible said pray always. And with all prayer, pray about it. If whatever is but I remember we had a sister, her dog had a uh, it got sick. She called home and said, Daddy, my dog is sick. You'd have thought it was somebody that just got hit by or somebody's child. Brother Hampton went down in prayer and he felt the concern and she was crying. My dog don't feel good. My dog don't feel. It seemed so small, but it bothered his child, which then bothered him. He said, God, you're going to stop the God of the universe. You're going to stop God that's over in Africa. God that's over in Europe. God that's over. He got to keep the uh, Hoover Dam from running over. He got to keep the, the Pacific before it goes over. He got to keep Niagara Falls. Keep doing. He got to keep the stars alive and the gravity. But one of his children had a challenge that had a small matter that bothered her. She called her father. Her father stopped the God that my God has the responsibility of the universe and said, God, there's a matter that's bothering me because it's bothering my child and I need you to intervene. And she called back a few minutes later and said, Daddy, my baby, my dog is up and running if it matters to you. My God, amen, amen. It matters to God Lord. to give it to you in a context and even from a deeper level. The Bible said, cast all your care upon him for he careth for you. It didn't say cares. But the word care there meant burden. If something becomes a burden, cast that thing. Take it to God. You got to have it in your second nature. Too many people are carrying too many things around. Now, you say, Brother Lee, give me an understanding from this. And I will. Go to Psalm 55, 22. Psalm 55, 22. And the iron did float. And the iron did float. Something so small. If it mattered to him, it mattered to God. Come on and read. Psalm 55, 22. Cast thy burden upon the Lord. Cast, to cast means to throw an object from one location to another. Oh Lord. To throw an object from one location to another. When it's cast, is no longer in the location it was before it was cast. Cast, say that but Frank. Cast thy burden upon the Lord. Cast thy burdens upon Thy burden. Cast thy burden. Singular. Upon the Lord. And he will what? And he shall sustain you. And he will sustain. He'll hold you up. And he you shall got this situation. You. It could be the smallest thing. This is what anxiety and depression is born out of. What? Stuff building up. You keep letting it build up, build up, build up, build up. You worry about the worry about the word. The moment it becomes a worry, the moment it becomes a burden, you cast that thing. Lord, I need you. This thing is keeping me up at night. Lord, the devil's trying to wreck my brain. 
Lord, hold on. I need you to help me, Lord. I, Lord, I, Lord, I, Lord, hold on. I got to go in there and pray. I'm praying until I pray through. You say, when do I pray through? You pray through when that thing that you was praying about, amen, you, 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 you're, you're convinced and you have a witness that you've given that thing to the feet of Jesus. Lord, this thing, the devil's trying to wreck my brain. The devil's trying to bring fear. The devil's trying to tell me this, that. Lord, the devil's the devil. Lord, Lord, I'm by Lord. What about this bill that's coming up? Lord, Lord, you got to love my child. Lord, Lord, oh God, Lord, I need you. It's taking my sleep from me. Lord, I need you. Lord, I'm praying. Lord, take this thing. He said, cast thy care and the Lord will sustain you. Hold you up. It said he will never suffer the righteous. Those that do this to be moved, to be overwhelmed, to fall under the weight of the burden. Many are overwhelmed because they focus on casting the big things, the big rocks. And before long, their pockets are full of small rocks and they're sinking, trying to swim up shore with the growing weight of all those small rocks and the responsibility of swimming against the tide. He said, and the iron head did flow, something seeming so small, something seeming so little. He said, hold on, I'm going to God with this. I'm not going to allow these little things to start adding up. I'm worried about this and I'm worried about this and I'm worried about this and I'm worried about that. You know what? Hold on, devil. You're not going to overwhelm me. I'm going to take each one of these little things. I'm not going to wait till it get big. I'm not going to wait till it gets this. I'm not going to wait till it grow and becomes a mouth. No, I'm concerned about every element of it. Lord, bless this. Lord, work this out. Lord, Lord, I'm at one person was going and they were saying, Lord, bless me to be able to go in the hospital and have this baby naturally. Lord, please, Lord, work it. And they began to pray, and Lord, bless me to end up having a, 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 the right nurse that comes in to work with me. And Lord, help me to have it during the right time. I mean, they breaking down the small. That's what God, you got that privilege. You don't got to bring God just the big stuff. You can bring in the small little axe heads, the small little things that seem insignificant, uh, insignificant to other people. You can take that to God and say, Lord, I'm asking you to help me to get this back at this time. Lord, I'm asking you to help me with this, this nuance of my situation. Lord, my children. Lord, I'm asking you not just to keep them or off the door, but Lord, give me a better understanding and help them to understand me where I'm at. Lord, I'm praying about the little stuff. Lord, I'm, I'm just asking you to give me the wisdom to work with this. Lord, I'm praying about the little stuff. Lord, please bless brother so-and-so. Help them to see this point and this point and not just that we don't argue, but Lord, we pray. I pray that you help my husband to see my perspective and Lord, I, Lord I'm, I'm praying about every nuance. I'm praying about everything and the axe head did flow. If you were concerned about that man's axe head, you're concerned about my small matters as well. Now, you must learn that God is concerned with everything. We serve a God who cares. Go to Psalms 40, verse 17. Go back just a few verses, a few chapters. Some say, Brother Lee, Well, let me say it. God is concerned about all of our affairs. You say you think God is concerned when I stub my toe? Yes. If that toe is bothering you, God is concerned. It's bothering him. You can take that to him. What about if I'm being mistreated at work? If that's bothering you, you can take that to God as well. What I'm a, I'm a nobody. God may be concerned about small things of the big people. We wouldn't read verse 17, brother. But I am poor. But what? But I am poor. But I am poor. And needy. And needy. Yet the Lord thinketh upon me. But the Lord, but yet the Lord thinketh upon me. God cares about you. Well, I'm not, I don't sing in a choir. You ain't got to sing in a choir for God to care about you. God cares about, well, I don't even say for a month. I don't care if you've been saved a day or 10 years. God cares about you just as much as he, there's no respected person with God. God cares. Yeah, I'm poor and need, I have a bunch of needs, Lord. It don't matter how many needs you got. It doesn't matter how small they may appear to be or how big. God cares. God cares. The thing that's on your plate right now, the thing that's causing you the biggest problem right now, God cares. The 
to think, my God, what you're dealing with right now, if you could parse the situation out and begin to pray about different elements of it, that's what's wrong. Many times people are dealing with matters in too big of a level. It's too big for you to swallow all that. Your faith can't even take that in to ask God just to do all of that. But maybe if you broke it down and said, Lord, could you work this out? And Lord, could you work that out? Before you know it, your faith is grabbing hold of these smaller matters and you realize God sustained me this day. He sustained me there. He worked this out. And before you know it, the whole situation is gone. He said, but I am poor and needy, and yet the Lord cares about me. Matthew 10, don't go there. He said, God is concerned about the sparrows. He said, the very hair on your head is numbered. He said, fear not, you are more valuable than the sparrows. So we see, go back to our text. It's critically important to understand the premise of the first point. And that is how deeply God cares about what concerns his children. Be rest assured that if it bothers you, it bothers God. This wasn't the big issue of raising the widow's son. This wasn't the big issue of killing Jairus' daughter, this, that, and the other. This was small, but God cares even about that. Come on and read. Chapter. Second Kings 6. Go to verse number 4. So he went with them. Mm -hmm. And when they came to Jordan, yes. they cut down wood. Uh -huh. But as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, Alas, Master, mm -hmm. for it was borrowed. My Lord. And the man of God said, Where fell it? And he showed him the place. And he cut down a stick and cast it in thither, and the iron did swim. My, my, my. And the iron did swim. So number two is possessing the faith to take the impossible to God. Here, this was iron. It seemed that the situation was hopeless. Jordan was not the clearest of rivers. But he did not hesitate. And he said, Master, despite how difficult it is, I'm bringing this to you. Hold on. You asking me to bring iron up out of water? Don't you understand the laws of physics? I totally understand the laws of physics, but I also understand the laws of God. Lord, this may seem impossible to man. But I believe you, Lord. I am bringing this to God. Now, oh, Lord, I don't want to get ahead of myself. The scripture speaks about faith. And this individual, this servant, had this, this young man, son of the prophet, he had faith that no matter how difficult, my Lord, the situation looked. It looked like it's an impossibility. But without hesitation, I'm praying about it. I'm bringing this to God. Your situation, I don't care how difficult it looks. I don't care how impossible it may seem. You got to have faith. I'm bringing this to God. God going to turn it around. But no, they got a connection with the boss. You know what? But I got a connection with the boss of all bosses. Amen. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's the way it is. Well, you understand that the judge said this, that, and the other. You know what? I understand what the judge said, but I just believe the king's heart is in the Lord's hand. I just, that's just the way I believe. I believe, I, I, the, it said the iron did swim. Did you, where, how, iron don't swim. It can't swim. It ain't got no arms. It ain't got no legs. It, ain't got, it can't swim. It's too heavy to swim. But the, my Bible says, and the iron did. You tell the devil that the next time you got an impossible situation, then he tells you that there's no way, there's no way. You just say, and the iron did swim. Period. Say what you want to say. Say how you want to say it. Tell me it ain't going to happen. Tell me it's too far gone. Tell me it's an impossibility. Tell me why. Tell me physics. Tell me the legal matter. Tell me physical restriction. I want you to know my Bible tells me. And the iron did swim. Ain't no iron swim. Ain't no iron in the Olympics. It don't even know how to swim. You can say how you want to say. I don't know if it swam this way, that way, this way, that. All I know is that that iron 
when the Holy Ghost spoke to it, it swam. You got to believe. You got to have faith. That despite the impossibility of your situation, if you take it to God, that iron will swim on you. Woman had an issue of blood, 12 years. She said in Mark, Matthew 9, 19, she said, if I can just but touch the hem. No, you bleed. No, you didn't have a monthly for 12 years straight. Imagine. Ain't no way that this is too far. Go. This is impossible. This is it. She says, if I can just put touch. If I can just put touch the him. If I can just just, just touch. it don't matter. I'm not taking my situation and the in the. OK, this is wrong and that. And this is that. And this is that. I understand all of that. But the iron did swim. <laughs> the iron did swim. That's the God I serve. That's the God I serve. I, if I could just put touch. Lord, if you could just touch my situation. Lord, I believe it. Lord, Lord, I'm sorry. Well, uh, did y'all see the land? Yeah, we came back with big old grapes like this. We came back. Did y'all see the land? Yeah, we saw the land, but man, there was giants over there. We can't do it. We can't. But we are well able. We are what? Faith. God said, that's who I'm going to use. Caleb and Joshua, y'all going. All the rest of y'all, y'all ain't going nowhere. Y'all don't believe iron can swim. Y'all ain't going. No, 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 no. Y'all ain't going. No. But you got to have faith. First, Lord, I'm taking everything to you in prayer. I don't care what it is. I don't care how small it may look, this, that, and the other. And it really wasn't small. His brother said, hold on. It's borrowed. You don't understand the gravity of that. He, they were going to do a work built in a new place where they would be taught. They were so broke. They didn't have money to go and buy it. They had to borrow it. These were poor sons of the prophet they didn't have much and this was basically talking about if this was a, even personally used he might not even have went to God like that he said let me go get another one there was no home depots back then right, right. it took a great effort to get an axe head right. and he was concerned that he didn't have the means or the wherewithal to give this man back what he had borrowed so therefore it was going to mess his name up his credit up his reputation up and guess what school he was in he was in the school of the prophets. He needed his reputation to carry out his assignment with God. He was saying, Lord, I'm going to mess around and be disqualified. Lord, I need you to come through for me. Lord, I, Lord, I need you. This is important to me. Lord, I don't want this. Lord, I need you. This means a lot to me, Lord. This was borrowed, Lord. I got my, my name. Lord, the name. Or oh, sometimes you're the same prayer. Lord, Lord, uh, uh, come through. Lord, shut the mouths of the gangsters. Lord, we don't need them running their mouth. Lord, Lord, I I know you're able. I know it's not about faith. I believe you, Lord. But Lord, for those that don't believe, for those that, Lord, I need you to come through. Lord, I need you to help us. Lord, I believe you. Amen. So here they were discussing the power of taking the impossible. The impossible to God. Jesus said in Mark 9, 23, if thou can believe, all things are possible. All things are possible to them that believe. One sister had a house. The train was riding by this house every day. And every time the train came by, the, the house was on a hill right by, right by the train track. They cut the train track out and had the mound right here. And the house was built on that mound. And they didn't. I guess I don't think realize that the engineers realize how the train would come down there and many people sometimes they have foundational issues they try to get this person that person to help with this and yeah and you got a foundational issue many times it's hard to deal with so she said man I could pay all this money to bring somebody in to reinforce but still to probably go back then after a couple years Lord I ain't got the money Lord my house is going down Lord did it go again Lord I can see my cabinet ain't closing no more Lord I Lord I'm asking you I don't know how you're going to work this out. I don't got money to get another house. I'm right where you have for me to be. I'm casting this upon you. My God, Lord, I believe. What's some people outside? What are they doing? Yeah, we digging up the railroad tracks so we can build a bike track. Lord, I thank you. Bike tracks won't make my house sink. Amen. Bikes ain't that heavy. Amen. Amen. If it matters to you, it matters to God. You don't worry about how God works it out. God will work it out how you want to work it out. God is not. Oh, Lord. 
God is not subject, oh Lord, to the things that we see. Amen. Let, let us go to the last point because I want to tie this together. And that is the power of God. Understanding the power of God to intervene despite the difficulties present. So I got faith to take the impossible to him. But also I understand the power of God to intervene despite the difficulties present. Go to Hebrews 11. Anytime a preacher says Hebrew 11, you should automatically say, Amen. <laughs> My Lord, that's the book of faith. Amen. I can't hear enough faith. Tell me, inspire me. Come on and read. Hebrews 11, verse number one. Now faith is the substance. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. It's the evidence of things of another realm. Understanding things of another realm oh lord and verse number six said and the iron did swim in the text go hold on you got to understand this possessing understanding of the power of god to intervene despite the difficulties present okay let me say it like this faith is a substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen faith is believing and understanding the different realm that God is operating in. He's not operating in the realm that you see. There are multiple realms. You are human. You're operating in the realm of the now and humanity. God is divine. He's operating in a divine realm. The creator of this realm is not. In order for this realm to operate, the creator of the realm had to create laws to govern this realm. We're subject to the laws that govern this realm. That's the, the way that this realm is able to be perpetuated because there is laws that govern it. But the creator of this realm is not subject to the laws he created to keep this realm sustained. Wow. Good, Faith is understanding that you are sending a petition to the God of another realm that's not subject to the laws that govern the realm that your issue is in. Faith is going outside. It's seen beyond the realm. You're in this realm. He created this realm for you to operate in. But when you tap into the creator of that realm, you have access to God that's not subject to this realm. This realm says if air don't enter your oxygen in so many minutes, then that heart gonna stop. Well, God is saying, it don't matter how long that heart been stopped. If I speak. Okay, gravity says the iron ore mixed with limestone and other stones inside a heated furnace put together, poured into molds that made an axe head. If it's in water, H2O, amen, two parts hot, uh, hydrogen, one part oxygen, amen, the mass and the gravity pull and the weight of that iron is going to go to the bottom and it's going to stay there. But God is saying, yes, those are laws that I created for that realm. They came and petitioned me. I'm, they're subject to that realm. I'm not subject to that realm. They called me me into the situation so therefore I'm saying I ain't swim blood stop my lord waters part my god you are saying I understand God faith is saying I'm actually leaving this realm going to another realm and believing the laws of this realm although my issue is in this realm I'm not subject to what I see I'm not subject to my situation I'm not subject to the iron I'm not subject to the issue I'm not subject it's cancer to you it ain't cancer to God it's my God it's diabetes to you it's not diabetes to God You got to understand, the iron did swim. 
realm. The laws of this realm do My not God hinder Amen. the God that created this realm. And when you're saved, when you're a child of God, you have access to the God of another realm. But you got to have faith which unleashes him to come into your realm, but not play by the rules. God bless you. Amen. Well, glory be to God. Amen. Well, glory be to God. We're thankful, amen. We're thankful tonight. The iron did swim. Some iron gonna swim around here. We gonna see some things around here. If thou can but believe all things are possible, we will not be subject to this realm, devil. We will believe God, amen, of another realm, of a divine realm. We believe God, despite what you're dealing with. God got the last say. Despite what you're facing, God is able. God is able. Amen. You ain't playing fair. You tapping into God. Amen. Who don't got to play by the rules. Shall we stand? Shall we stand? Thank the Lord. Be encouraged. Be encouraged, saints. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Whatever you're dealing with, this was a word for you. The iron did swim. Somebody need to write a song. The iron did swim. My, my, my. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Be encouraged, saints. Be encouraged. You are not in an impossible situation. No, it's not. No, it's not. Quit looking online, trying to figure out your city. Amen. You looking on this realm to this laws. Amen. God is able. He don't play by those rules. God will reverse this situation. God will turn it around. We've seen it done. Amen. Man say you can't see. God say see. Amen. Man say they too far gone. God say amen. I can reach them still. Amen. The iron did swim. We are faith believing people. We believe God for the impossible. We will not limit God. We're in a situation. It don't matter what it is. How small it may be. How small we may be. We will take that impossible situation to a God of the impossible. That word does not even exist in his vocabulary. We're thankful. We're going to sing a very fitting song to inspire your faith. If you're online and you have a situation that seems to be impossible or you're here, amen, we want to pray for you tonight. This is to inspire faith service. Just inspire your faith, inspire your faith, just to have you operate in a different realm. Have your faith allow you to operate. What are we singing? Page 104, he will care for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I will walk today in the Christian way. Page 104. Though dangers I may see, I will not fear. For the Lord is near. He will care for me. Thank the Lord. No matter, no matter what happens, He will care. He will care for me. He will care. And his mighty hand will enable. No matter. No test I face. It's ready for my need. Thank you, Lord. When my, sorrows my, my. rise to obscure my skies, rise obscure he my proves sky. a friend indeed. Thank you, Lord. No matter, no matter what, you're going what through, happens, he will care for me. He will. He will care he will. for me. He will care for me. He will. And his mighty hand will enable me to stand. No matter what happens to me. He will not fail. Verse number three, come on. He will not fail in the strongest gale. Thank you, Lord. That the... stormy winds can blow. That stormy And in his grace is a hiding place. Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. It's a Unknown hiding place. Thank to you, any Lord. foe. 
Thank you, no Lord. Matter no matter what, what happens, we go through, he will care Thank for you, me. Lord. You'll carry us through it. Amen. You will he bless will us, care Lord. For me. He will you care will work for me. it out. Thank you, Lord. And his mighty we believe hand you, will Lord. enable me to stand. No matter what happens to me. Every head bowed. Every head bowed. Father, we thank you. We appreciate you. Your word is a light. It's a lamp. Father, we thank you, dear God. The Bible said man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Father, this word will sustain us in the battles, dear God. Father, when we are in impossible situations, help us to realize, Father, dear God, you are not subject, amen, to the laws of this realm. Father, we pray you renew and inspire and enlighten our faith at another level. Father, we pray, dear God, that those that are going through dark tunnels, dear God, those that may be going through long battles, Father, we pray that you'll give them another angle of faith we pray that they'll see faith in another angle tonight father we pray it will produce dear god more fruit dear god in their situations that's where the glory comes father the more that we can produce through faith the more manifestations we see the more manifestations we see the greater glory god gets and he said if i be lifted up i'll draw all men the world dear god has many issues but they want a place they can go to that their faith will be inspired to see situations turn around. Lord, bless your people tonight. Father Isaiah, dear God, Father, dear God, he was endeavoring to preach this, and he said, God, will open up rivers in high places, fountains in the middle of the desert. No, desert don't have fountains. I'm not subject to this realm. Who do you think I am? I'll bring trees in the middle of the desert, fertile trees, these trees, those trees don't be enough, only cactus grow in the desert. Don't you understand who I am? But if you read up earlier, he said, when the poor and needy seek water. Father, that's the little man. That's the nobody. And all they want is water and you're going to do all of, you're going to mess up the whole realm of nature. Yes, he will. And Lord, he'll do the same thing for us. Father, many have court cases. Many are praying for children, dear God, incarcerated. Father, there are many physical issues among us. Father, many are dealing with, dear God, family issues and broken relationships, marriages that are broken. Father, dear God, many are dealing with things that look impossible. Father, we pray that they will look at it in a different angle tonight. We pray, dear God, that you inspire them. It doesn't matter how long. It doesn't matter how dark. It doesn't matter how impossible. Amen. When God say live, there's nothing man can do, even nature. Father, when Jesus spoke, they were on a storm. Amen. They were at sea. It looked like they were going to be destroyed amen jesus woke up amen he, they woke him up he looked and said what is it they said we're in a storm jesus looked at mother nature in the face and he said peace you listen to me peace be still they said what manner of man is this that the, even the winds obey you don't understand i'm not subject to the laws of this realm i am the creator of it help us lord to understand the gravity, the inspiration behind, and the enlightenment behind the message, and the iron did swim. Father, we love you, Lord. We need some iron to swim around here. We got some things, dear God, that seem impossible. But Lord, nothing is impossible with you. Our faith is renewed tonight to pray with more fervency, fervency, dear God. Father, not to be afraid of the tough cases. Father, bless in a special way. We love you from the depths of our heart. We pray for the saints here and online. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us all say amen. You may be seated briefly.